if you don't want trouble, you got to use shovel. All right, I'm going to be attempting to change a couple solenoids and some just a little bit of wiring within the transmission. Uh, this 2003 Corvette has a 4L60E, which the E stands for electronic, so it shifts electronically, and I believe one of the solenoids for the uh, transmission has gone out. It's not shifting out of second gear. This happened to me while I was on the highway. I was doing about 70. All of a sudden, the, the RPMs just shot straight up, and I had to do over 80 miles an hour for it to shift into fourth gear, and I was really uh, chancing getting a ticket on the way home from work. So you're going to have to get yourself, I believe, it's going to be 10.8 quarts of transmission fluid. And you're also going to have to get a filter with a gasket. And this right here, I bought this off of a company called Cascade Transmissions. We've got wire harnesses, all the solenoids, things like that. So you got shift solenoids, you're going to have to make sure. Um, there's certain ones that you're going to have to put in the exact place. I think there's two of them that are exactly the same. There's ones in these blue bags. It doesn't matter which, which ones they go to within the housing here. For the whole, like, they got the transmission harness and everything. In it. So you get, this is called a valve body. That whole assembly, which I'm not going to be removing from the car. I'm going to try to do an install. But I don't recommend... This is just me. I don't recommend buying from Cascade Transmissions. I heard they had some bad reviews with some of these parts. I'm hoping to God that they're okay because I just got these in the mail. I was kind of sketched out because they didn't send me a kind of uh, a tracking number or anything saying that they sent the order. They sent me an email stating that the payment was received, but that was it. And I'm going to take a look inside the owner's manual to make sure. So transmission fluid automatic. So we're going to go to 5-20. Almost there. So I'm just going to look through this and see how many quarts this actually takes. So I ended up having to buy 11 quarts of tranny fluid. And I'm going to sift through this and get some more information. All right. I cannot find anything in the owner's manual about how many quarts the transmission takes. So I read that it was 10.8. Turns out 10.8 quarts for if you're doing a complete overhaul. Me, I'm pretty much just doing a change because I'm taking the pan off and just going to replace those electrical parts. And this is the number I called, so they said 5 quarts. So it's going to take 5 quarts, so I get to take 6 quarts back and uh, get some of my money back at the parts store. So use that number right there. That's the GM Direct phone number for their customer service. And what they're going to ask you for is probably the last idea. They asked me for the last eight digits of my VIN number. So just be prepared, be prepared for that. And they also asked for my address, which I declined. Also, I bought this little mechanics creeper from Jegs. I am not sponsored. Not sponsored. Got it for $17. It comes up to eh, about to my waist. I mean, you don't really know it more much than that. Because only your upper torso is going to go in there unless you're like a really tall dude. And then maybe you want to get something else. But I like it. $17. It's on sale right now on Jegs. I've been buying a lot of parts for them for my build if you watched my last video. And uh, LaCroix can for, for scale. One thing you're going to want to do when jacking up the car is you want to make sure you have everything cracked. So, got the door cracked a little bit. Uh, the top, I've loosened up the top. Also have the hood popped, just kind of hanging there. Same with the rear hatch, because anytime you lift up a vehicle, you have the tendency for it to have body flex and you don't want things to get damaged. So. Just, you know, make sure it closes just a little bit, but not all the way. So that way things can flex if they need to. Like body panels are not smashing into each other, crack a window or anything of that nature. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm lifting up the car on by the rear. Um, on my jack, I have a puck. 
and pretty much got lined up in the center of this cross member here. And what I'm going to do is hopefully just lift up enough to where I can put these ramps up under the tires to hold the car up. And then I got that shovel chocking off the front uh, tire there, as you saw in the beginning of the video. So, hope I don't screw anything up. Well, that plan worked better than I planned. <laughs> anyway, tires are sitting flush on the ramps. And of course, I'm still going to use jack stands because, you know. You don't want a car falling on you. You just can't trust certain items to just hold up on their own. So never play around with safety. All right, for the transmission pan, I find that a 13 16th wrench is the best fit. Not too much room in there for a socket between the exhaust pipe and where that drain plug is at. All right, I got the bolt out. It's There's nothing coming out, possibly due to the car being tilted forward. So all the fluid's going forward inside the pan here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a fluid pump, and I'm going to shove the tube in there and try to siphon out what I can. I went to the store, got one of these pumps, and it comes with these little stems right here. So you can place it inside the bottle, so that way you can pump whatever fluid you're using into whichever reservoir. And so it's just a little stem pump. So I tried to stick this into the transmission hole, which it didn't do anything because it's real, it's real sturdy. It doesn't bend or anything like that. So this five, three sixteenths, five sixteenths tubing that I bought when I made my brake bleeder actually is the same diameter as this stem right here. And I stuck it into the pump, which I stuck the pump, that, that hose right into the transmission to pump this out. Because when you take the transmission pan, there's gonna be fluid inside of there that's gonna come out. So I'm just gonna try to pump out as much of this as I can. I did not expect this to work. All right, each time that I pump it, you can see the fluid just flowing right through. So this is going to make it a lot easier when removing the transmission pan. Don't have to worry about transmission fluid just floating through everywhere. All right, to remove these bolts, uh, start with towards the front of the car. They're 13 millimeters. And let's see. Just to undo them, just go all the way around. Uh, so just use a 13 millimeter socket. I got one of these Milwaukee tools. I love them. They make light work of anything. You saw how easy it just broke that bolt instead of sitting here with a regular socket wrench, turning and turning and turning. Okay, what you gotta do here is you gotta remove this 15 millimeter bolt that's holding the exhaust, well, the pipe for the muffler to the rest of the exhaust coming from the engine to get up to a bolt that's right in there because this bolt sticks out and gets in the way so you're gonna have to remove that so it's a 15 millimeter and it's the passenger side that's having a problem so just gonna remove that and when you're done be sure to put that back the driver's side there is plenty of clearance so what I'm doing is I'm just going around taking out the bolts and just kind of leaving one in there just to hold up the pan so that way I can just take that one out and easily let the pan drain into the catch pan there. I'm removing the last bolt here. Moving my tools out of the way. I'm going to replace the drip pan under here. Get that pump out of there. I have a rubber mat here on the floor. 
stole out of my old Santa Fe. It was the cargo mat. The pan feels really light. Uh, a little pain to move around. Oh, oh. There we go, dripping. It's caught on something. And not too bad. And looks like we're inside the transmission. And that's all the parts in there that I'm going to be changing out. All these solenoids, the pressure plate, and looks like the same type of gasket. Got a silicone gasket in that kit. So I'm going to try to film me doing this as best as to my ability. I'm not a, cinem a cinematographer, but I do what I can. One thing I didn't do that I recommend, I mean, it's up to you. Since I'm messing with electronics, I didn't unplug the battery. And since I haven't messed with anything underneath the transmission, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and undo that. And will not focus because of the glare. Using a 5 16 little wrench. All right, so I'm going to be placing a solenoid here which is one of the shift solenoids. And to do that, there's going to be a couple of picks in the way, or clips rather. I'm using a dental pick. I forgot to pick up some automotive picks, so I'm hoping this thing works. Let's see, I don't know, it feels kind of flimsy. Looks like it's gonna break. Yeah, it didn't quite do it. Um, try this other end, it's a little thicker. And it just slips right out of there. Try a screwdriver here. Alright, so I'm going to try the screwdriver to get these little clips out. It's not going too well. Should have picked up those automotive picks. Yeah, there we go. There's one. So these little clips here, probably not going to be able to focus too well. There's little slots that they go into. And I should be able to pull a solenoid right out. Oh, that's great. I wasn't expecting that. So expect if you pull out each solenoid, there's going to be fluid. That will go with it. Alright, I didn't record everything I did. It was so... It was a hell of a process. Um, it wasn't so much as hard, it was just tedious. There's things that you had to do while being up, up in here. Alright, so you got three 10 millimeter bolts there and two 8 millimeters for that pressure plate. And there's these pins in here that you have to pop out for these two solenoids. And to get to this right here, I had to remove this. So that's three 10 millimeter bolts. And just mind you, every time you pull a solenoid or something out of a socket, or even this pressure plate, fluid's gonna start dripping out like crazy. I mean, I, I, I gotta, I'm glad I have this rubber mat here. I mean, some got on the concrete, but it's not bad, but it's, it's, it's very messy. And then you got the shift solenoids here. Um, those were, those were, I mean, they're pretty easy to take out, it's just, the matter of getting those clips out. They're a little more buried than these are here for those two solenoids. That clip there. A little hard to zoom in on it. But, I mean, it's done. I got The only thing I couldn't do was put in the new wire harness. So I'm going to just go with the old harness and just pray that's not the problem. Because I would have to take off the whole valve body and that's something I didn't want to do. Especially my first time messing around inside of a transmission. And... I could not get it out because of that this right here, I think it has to be unclipped from the inside. That whole plastic housing for the harness. 
But that's something I didn't want to mess with. So I just made sure I didn't rip any of the wires or break any of the connectors for any of the solenoids. And that's pretty much it. So I replaced six parts, pressure plates, two solenoids, this piece here, and those two solenoids there. So, so six connectors. You'll know they all go to the same place, very self-explanatory. Um, just got that piece back in. That was the last thing. And that's it, so I'll get to clean up the pan. And gonna pump some new fluid in there. Get the new gasket with a new filter. Just start getting everything reassembled. Pretty much do everything backwards. And that's it. Uh, I know it didn't, might not help much since I didn't really record what I was actually doing here. It was my first time, so I, I wasn't too, too confident on it, but I still got it done. It wasn't bad, I mean, if you ever taken off a transmission pan before, once you get in here, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, just, just be very mindful and careful not to break anything existing or any of your new parts. And I'm just going to hope that this works. Thank you for watching. If you like this, please subscribe. And they're trying to work on a series of getting my Camaro done. Uh, got some parts on the way if you watch any of my previous videos. If you haven't, please go back and watch them. Uh, got a lot of things going on. A lot of projects.